Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Welcome to the Larry Kreider Leadership Podcast. So glad you're with us again today, where we learn these small changes we can make in our lives. And as we make these changes, we see massive improvements, not only in our lives, but it's become a great blessing to all the people we serve. It's with good. me in the studio today is my long-term friend uh, for many, many years, many years, Pastor David Hass. Dave, hey, so Larry. good to have you, man. Good to be here with you. I am good so to see looking, you again. So yeah. looking forward to talking to you, because you have so many... I mean, when I travel, often people say, okay, you're from the Lancaster County, you know, that general South Central Pennsylvania area. And, and uh, you know David Hess. Oh, yeah, do I ever, man. He's my friend. You, well. you help so many people. And of course, you're a writer. You've written the book Hope Beyond Reason. We're going to talk a little bit about that later today. Mm-hmm. You've written uh, Hope Beyond Disappointment. And then Side by Side. And obviously, it's you and, and your wife, Sherry, have worked together in ministry for many years. You've learned so much about how that works. Let's get started. So okay. you pastor Christ Community Church. Tell us about Christ Community Church. We've been at Christ Community for 35 years. 35 years? Yes. Wow, I remember when you went there. Do you Here's remember? how old I am, huh? A long time <laughs> wow. ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a wonderful, it's been a wonderful experience. We really feel at home. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you were to describe Christ Community Church to somebody, how would you, what would you say, who, who are you? We're, we're a family. Yeah, you are. We, we, actually, we actually call uh, the church, refer to the church as the house. Yes. And our our main meeting room, the living room, right, uh, right. which the church started in a living room. Wow! Yeah, four families, uh, fifty five, almost sixty years wow. ago, started Amazing. in the middle of the Jesus movement. And uh, one of the original couples, actually, that that it started in their living room. Sure, they're still with us. Are they part that of the house? So the others have, are at home with the Lord, but sure, yeah. Oh, that that is so cool. Uh, well, Dave, we're going to talk about leadership today. I want to, okay. first of all, dig into your past a bit. <laughs> we want to talk about some of the stories behind the stories, okay. things that you've learned about leadership when you were young. First of all, let's talk about how you grew up a bit, how you came to Christ. Let's just get the whole deal here today. Okay. Well, I had I had no choice in growing up in church. My mom played the piano. My dad was a choir director. Oh, wow. So. I might have even been born there. I, I don't really remember, but but I was been, been too long ago. Been long ago. <laughs> so uh, a wonderful little country church, yeah, and uh, uh, very. Uh, we knew everybody. Uh, came to know Jesus there. So many healthy foundations were laid in my life, and my heart was really tenderized to the Lord. Hmm. And I can remember the day uh, that I surrendered to Jesus. Wow! I was about four or five years old. Amazing. And I was I was playing in my room with my GI Joes, really. <laughs> yeah, and I remember it just felt like Jesus walked in the room, and I, I just kind of laid GI Joes down and, really? and and asked Jesus to come into my heart. That's and went amazing. down. I told my mom and went back up and kept playing. And yeah, so it, wow, yeah. So it, it's it, it's been a, a kind of a lifelong journey of coming to know Him and you know, learn things, unlearn some things. Right. I, I mean, right. I picked up wonderful things yeah. in my home church, but there were some traditions that sure. I picked up that were kind of limiting and yeah. I had to unlearn them honorably, honoring the rock I was cut out of, but right, still right. learning new things. Yeah. Talk about that. That's important. That's a really important leadership principle that everyone needs to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How do you I, do that? Well, what's helped me as a dad, I have, I have three children and, right. and grown and married and grandkids. Um, One of the scriptures I like as a dad is earthly fathers disciplined us as seemed best to them. Right. Doesn't mean they did everything perfect, Correct. but they did their best. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important as we come to new discoveries in the Lord that we honor those who taught us what they knew and passed on what they knew. And, And we can honor them as we step into the new. Right. I mean, my right. home church was cessationist. Right. And the gifts ceased 
we've got the Bible. We don't need the gifts of the Holy Spirit right. anymore. That's what they claimed, yeah. And and so I I uh, when I learned that there's more, mm-hmm. uh, there was a temptation to say, why didn't they tell me that? Right. But they were just trying to be obedient to the word. They They're, simply didn't know. They just in didn't many know. cases. Yeah. Right. That's a great point to say for all young leaders listening or any age leaders, really. If we can honor what God's done in our lives and the people who spoke into our lives during the many seasons of our lives, honor that and, you know, and yes, turn on the light and that yeah. darkness will flee when you do that, when you yeah. get new light, new revelation. Mm-hmm. But let's not put people down. Let's no. just shine a light and yeah. help others take next steps of faith for their own lives. Amen. Yeah, so, so, so good. Yeah. So when you were young, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, really young in the church yeah. and always, you know, in and out of church meetings, did you have any idea that you'd be involved in, in like, Christian leadership in the Not future? at all. Not at Not all. Not at all. When did that first kind of like I, click or start happening? Because I, I met you when you were pretty young, and you yeah. were already a leader. Yeah. Probably in your 20s, I'm guessing. I don't, yeah, it was 20s. I mean, uh-huh. we started, we were just barely married and yeah. 21 were pastoring, and that's when we met, right? In well, those yeah, days. Exactly. Yeah. It's a long time, days A long scary. time ago. Yeah. So, how did that all happen? How did you get that call from God? Uh, you know, it, it kind of grew. I, I remember one day. I grew up in a, uh, in a in a wonderful home. To this yeah. day, my my dad's ninety one. Yeah, uh, he and I still talk on the phone and wow. cry, laugh till we cry. He he's just had a, a sense of humor and a Beautiful. a wonderful uh, spirit toward life. Mom's mom went home to be with Jesus uh, two years ago, okay. and got to be with her for that passing Beautiful. time. But we laughed a lot at home, and mm-hmm. we enjoyed life. and And I remember we would watch uh, Red Skelton. On TV oh and other other comedians <laughs> and, and laugh. Most but, people never heard of him. You know? Oh, I know, I know. Long <laughs> time ago, he kind of did this. Yeah, little. right. So and then, uh, of course, I grew up in church, and we had we had missions conferences yeah. and evangelistic yeah. conferences, and and I was stirred one day when I heard a missionary say that there are people in the world who have not heard about Jesus wow. yet, and I came home so shaken. Wow. I, I knew I liked to make people laugh. And so uh, I wrote a letter to Red Skelton. Really? And my mom never sent it. She kept it. And she gave it to me a few years ago before she passed. She said, I've held on to this all these years, but I wanted you to see it. And I wrote this letter to Red Skelton. I said, I, want, I like to make people laugh, so I want to be a comedian. But I also want to be a missionary because people haven't heard about Jesus. How can I do both? Wow. And that was, uh, I was about... I, mean, I don't know, eight years old, seven, eight years old. You're doing both ever since because you're a I, great communicator. Well, I, it just comes. I don't plan it. It just kind of happens. I, and I think people just need to laugh more. It's just good sure. therapy. And exactly. sometimes we're too serious. The exactly. upright are too uptight. And I think yeah. we need to just learn how to enjoy sure. it. Sure. Were there other leadership roles you had when you were young, like you're a teenager? Well, you know, um, one of the things I did in the youth group, uh, and it was, it was a small church. I mean, yeah. The youth group was... I think 12 people or something right, like right. that. But uh, we had a nearby orphanage. And when I heard about orphans, mm. my heart went out to them. So for a number of years, I led a, a ministry, a, a big brother ministry to the local orphanage. And me and I think almost all the guys in the in the youth group on weekends would go over, play basketball, play games when it rained talk with and share with mm. and pray with mm. these these boys in the in the orphanage and uh looking back i i i i guess i led that i i feel I feel when i look back i don't know that i thought i'm leading this i th- i think i was just saying hey i'm inspiring other people to carry sure. a burden that right. that i have and let's share it together it was always very much a group thing i okay. always i love to get people together i Never was a top-down leader. I always okay. like to get consensus, and mm-hmm. even even younger years. So, and you're still that way today. Yes, in many ways. Yeah, yeah. That's how you lead. I mean, Christ Community Church is so well known uh, in our nation because, and in fact, in this whole region, there are a few churches that would be, you know, they'd be regional churches. People travel an hour, an hour and a half, two hours to get there on Sundays, whatever. And you're one of those. You lead one of those mm-hmm. of those churches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, talk about leadership there. What you've learned? Anything you've learned about leadership in that whole process? You were on staff first, right? Before yes, you I was senior pastor. Yeah, I was on staff. I I actually left the ministry for a while. 
uh, had I remember a, that. Had, yeah. a, had a season that I, I just got kind of mm-hmm. crunched in a discipleship movement, a right, top-down right, control sure, thing. It, it sure. just uh, and I, I left. Right. And uh, went to work at a nursing home for three mm-hmm. years. I remember. And, yeah. So you learned, of course, leadership. Yeah. Things happened there too, and your life. Leadership happened there, and it was it was kind of like an experience of. So your life's uh, been in seasons, happen. like most of us. Seasons, and so I think it's good to help other leaders understand, if they're younger leaders especially, that we are in seasons. We try things to see if it works. It's not, sometimes it's God, sometimes it's not. Right. But we're simply walking through this journey of a leadership, and if we're faithful and keep our eyes on Him, He'll lead us into whatever He has for us Amen. down the road. Amen. Yeah. So, and that, you've seen that happen. Yeah. Uh, along the way, I think uh, one of the struggles I had was I went to leadership conferences. Okay. And what seemed to be promoted was a style of leadership right. that was so contrary to who I am. Right. It was this flamboyant, you know, you go get the vision, you come up with a creative Type slope. Type A personality. Totally. Oh, ID. yes. And I love those people. <laughs> sure. I, I have those people in my life. Right, you know? right. But that was, that was mirrored as the only way to lead. Yeah. And yeah. so I started to, to pull back. And, and that might have even been a factor in why I thought, I'm just going to get yeah. out of the church system. Yeah. And because I, I, you know, and I thought, I'll, I'll go to a nursing home and I'll work there for a while. And I did that for about three years. Yeah. And uh, and then had an encounter at one of the Dove churches, right? At Ronnie Myers Church mm-hmm. with with exactly. the Lord, and he just mm-hmm. really called me back in yeah. in to lead. Some some Type A leaders had had said to me, "You should not be a pastor, really, and you should not be leading." And here are the reasons why. And and uh, they just went down a list, mm. and it and it just that kind of cratered me, and so I kind of you know went off to the nursing home. And uh, then I was at Ron Myers Church right. in Newmanstown. Yeah, Newmanstown, Pennsylvania. And I pretty much had shut down. I'd mm-hmm. spent three years, just that mm-hmm. whole experience shut me down emotionally. I mm-hmm. didn't laugh, didn't cry, didn't, didn't think of pastoring again. Mm. And a, a teenage young man, Down syndrome, at Ronnie's church came up to me. And it was so the Lord. He, he knew, he sent that young man like stealth. Just because I, if a Type A guy had come to prophesy right, over right. me, I would have said, you know, get yeah. out of here. <laughs> I'm, but I'm out. but he, he just came up, looking up at me and yeah. smiling, and he said, "Pastor Ron told us we can hear God. He talks to us." And I said, "Yeah." He said, "He tells us things for other people." And I said, "Yeah." He said, "He told me something for you." Wow. This and I looked awesome. at him, and then he started to... It's almost like he had the list of what had been told to me of why I shouldn't be a pastor. He said, someone told you you're not a pastor. Wow. But you are. And he, then I start crying. I, uh, I'd been shut up for, for three years. I started crying, and, uh, and, and then he, they hugged me. And then he looked up smiling, and, and he went on, and he said... You this, you this, and it's like he had the list, and he went down over the list and just that canceled it. Amazing, them. and it's it changed your life. Changed my life. I and it was the church was in Newman's town. Oh, new, yeah. new man's. The, new I became man's a new town. man in new, no, in new man's yeah. town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife Sherry, who was sky high pregnant, actually our 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 third son was born the next day. Wow. Uh, she looks back. And sees me and felt like I've got my David back. Aww. She saw me laughing. She saw me crying. And me and this young man just just embracing and That's laughing. And, and then we'd pull back, laugh, then we'd I cry. I love we'd, that uh, story. It was just a wonderful time. And so what happened then? Like well, how, how did you get back in leadership? Well, I, I went to a pastor at Christ Community Church, Larry mm-hmm. Titus. Mm-hmm. I went to uh, talk with him mm-hmm. because my wife's family was going to that church. Sure. And I went to him for counseling. And so I sat down with him and I told him what a mess I was. And then he, he said, I want to hire you. And I said, well, <laughs> let me, let's run the tape again. Yeah, right. I am a mess. You don't want to hire me. <laughs> no, he said, no, no, I, w- I want to bring you on. So Sherry and I were hired to do children's uh, ministry. I did puppets with Sherry. Wow. And then I did counseling. 
uh, even used a puppet sometimes. No, not really. yeah, for <laughs> counseling. <laughs> <laughs> but did counseling, did uh, teaching a little bit, and just I got my feet wet back in ministry again. And I served there for three years. And then one day Larry felt called to go uh, into an international ministry. Right, right. And uh, boom, that. You know, he turned it over to me out of the blue. I had no... Totally unexpected. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we meeting with you a few weeks before that with well, Ron and I. And you I know. Meeting and we were, you were thinking about planting a church with, with the Dove family. was going to work with you right? in, in <laughs> Lebanon County, <laughs> I think right, it was. it was. It sure, was. I, and, and I was really excited about yeah, that. Yeah, we were too. Come back home, be with yeah, you guys. Sure. And we've always been connected, of you course. know, but... But uh, that that came out of the blue. That was God. That was so much. Well, fun. it was. Yeah, it, it, was. it feels like the Joe Cocker song. I came in through the bathroom window. I have no idea how I got into <laughs> this, but here I am. <laughs> so, well, Dave, before we go on, we want to talk more about leadership. Obviously, yeah. Twenty five years ago, you had an experience change your life, uh, yeah. and I want you to tell us what happened. You've written a book on this called. Hope Beyond Reason. I've read yeah. this. It's an awesome book. I would highly recommend it. You get it on Amazon. By the way, check out the show notes. Everybody listening today, more about Dave, more about Christ Community Church, more about the various books he's written. This man has so much he offers the body of Christ. Uh, you may not know this, but again and again, people have told us we'd love it. We invite Dave Hess to our conferences. Wow. Because, you know, you bless people so much. You're so real and you just help yeah. people take steps ahead. Yeah. Talk to us about what happened 25 years ago. Okay. Well, like any crisis, some of them just sneak up on you. Yeah. I, I thought I was pretty healthy and suddenly I started to feel really bad and I started to bruise all over my body. I didn't know what was wrong. I thought I had the flu and uh, I didn't want to go to the doctor because right. I'm a guy. Right. Exactly. And, and they do, th they have sharp things right. and, and they weigh you. And I... <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know which is more, <laughs> more devastating, but all of that, we don't like to go. So right. uh, I didn't go to the doctor. I just kept going until finally blood was coming out of my gums. Uh, and uh, I discovered it one day at a grocery store. I was, I, uh, I reached up to my mouth and, and I was bleeding out of my gums. I thought, man, I, I know I should floss more. I thought it was a, I thought it was <laughs> dental hygiene issue. Yeah. Uh, remember going to the to the cashier and she, and she and I was I was uh, you know buying some groceries in the grocery store and she said, "Oh, my, you're bleeding out of your teeth." I said, "No, no, don't worry. I was just sampling the meat." <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so uh, but then when I got home, I was really scared. I said, "Honey, look at this." So, uh, long story short, went to the doctor um, the next day for a blood test, and they found that I had leukemia. I had uh, acute leukemia, and they were very concerned because they they feel like that they caught it maybe too late. Mm. And we learned I didn't really know much about leukemia, mm -hmm. uh, but there are several kinds, several chronic uh, strains of leukemia that are treated with medication. Acute leukemia is different; it goes it directly attacks mm. your uh, white blood cells. Mm. And uh, usually people die within 30 to 60 days. So I'm not sure where I was in that, but they were gravely wow. concerned. And then uh, went to the hospital to begin chemotherapy and treatment. We prayed. We had, uh, you know, this hit us out of the blue. Right. We said, Lord, what do you want us to do? And uh, we, we felt to, to go with that. I'm not, I'm not advocating that as the the sure. totally way to the way to go. Sure. We felt a peace about Everyone it. Everyone hears from God. Everybody individually hears from God individually. Mm -hmm. So we felt to do that, but then we had people praying. Mm -hmm. We had we had people praying a lot. A lot. I remember stopped by the house. They'd come. I was of course in isolation, uh, but and and the way my room was situated, I could look over to the visitation room on mm -hmm. the other on the same floor, and people from church would be there. Oh. And families with kids. I'd look, I'd look over in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep, and there they would be, some of them with their hand on the window of the, mm. of the visiting room pointing over you know, to, to my room. And we just we had people driving around the hospital praying, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and people around the area. My friend Charles Stock, and yeah, of course you guys at sure. churches, pastors, oh, yeah. pastors really yeah, we, we were getting all that information. Yeah. We could pray, yeah. But they, yeah. they had told us, so they discovered it. Actually, I'm coming up on the anniversary. They discovered it the Monday before Thanksgiving. And then about wow. a week into my stay in the hospital, 
they pulled my my wife Sherry aside yes. and they said they said we we don't think he's going to last till Christmas. So really get your kids in. Do what you can. We wow. we know he's in isolation, but really we we feel you just go in without masks, without gowns. Just go in, be with your husband because mm. we feel like it's it's the end. So she brought in a this little. This is twenty five years ago, 25 my friend. Twenty five years ago. Wow. Yeah. Tell yeah. us more. Well, what you know, I do. How, how well, it what, what, it's a, a long story. I'll just compress it a bit. He, uh, we went through chemotherapy, uh, and they said we don't think this is. It's it's so it's so strong. They they didn't find one healthy white cell in my body. I had like over eight hundred thousand blast white cells in my body. I had no immune system and uh, I had no platelets. That's why, that's why my, sure. my, I was bleeding and bruising. And so I came through the first round of chemotherapy and uh, they said, it looks like it went into remission, but they said, we're going to keep going with this because we we're not sure it's such an aggressive strain. And a young girl came into my, my room mm-hmm. with her mom she was from a nearby church, 12 years old. In the hospital. In the hospital. She okay. came in with mom and she had a note card. And uh, she had been healed of a tumor in, in her uterus mm. the size of a football. It was wow. cancerous. They had told her she would probably die. She lived. And the Lord gave her a scripture that, she, that carried her through her ordeal. And it was uh, Psalm 118. Uh, I will live and not die yes. and, and declare what the Lord has done. That's right. And so she said, I wanted to give this to you. Aww. So I posted it right beside my bed, and there it was, and just declared that. I will live and not die, and I will tell everyone what the Lord has done. And so it helped carry me through some really tough, difficult yeah. times. In fact, uh, one time I had a really bad bout with the chemo, with the, uh, with the platelet therapy that they would give me afterward. And my body went into shock. And, uh, my wife was in the room uh, the nurse called. She said, it looks like we're going to lose him. And she watched as the color just flushed from my body. Wow. And I, I, uh, my heart stopped. They had to, to, you know, pat, use the paddles right, to get right. me back. And, and, uh, while while Sherry watched that physically, which was which was a, a shock, I slipped into this place with the Lord, mm. and I felt such peace and His presence, mm. and I felt like every cell of my body just wanted to jump into Him, like He there's home. I wanted to be with Him, and no, He said nothing to me, other than it, it was it was like I saw Him behind a. Uh, shower curtain. He was opaque, and and then all of a sudden the the uh, the, the shower curtain got dark, yeah. and I woke up. And it was like it was almost like without words. He was saying, "That time will come, mm-hmm. but not yet." And I woke up in the room, and hours and hours had passed. It was mm-hmm. well into the night. Sherry was there by my bed, mm-hmm. and I said, uh, "Pull the rail down." She said, "What? You can't get out of bed." I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." pull the rail down. And, uh, she did. And she said, what are we doing? I said, I said, I, I want to stand with you and declare what God said over our lives. Wow. And so there I stood with my IV pole mm. and trying to hold my gown together in the back. Right, and, right. and, and there we are standing on wobbly legs. I said, let's go. And we just declare, we declared that scripture, Psalm 118. Yeah. Uh, we, we declared other promises he'd mm. made over us. Just said, that we're going to see this together. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to do this together. You and I were told we'd go to nations. You, we were going to yeah. raise up sons and daughters and grand grandchildren in the Lord. Yeah. And we've, we've got a long way to go. Let's do, you know, and we declared it and yes. went back down and, 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 uh, you know, that, but that wasn't the end. It wasn't like, oh, then the, yeah. everything got better. I was in the hospital six months in that room. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> just when it looked like I was coming into the clear, right. uh, my appendix burst. Oh. And uh, I, uh, at that point, they said, we can't operate on you. you. You have no platelets. You have no immune system. You 
you know, this is it. So I started to consult with hospice and they told me how they'd make me comfortable until I went to be with the Lord. And my Sherry, my wife, who's such a a wonderful, fun, we've been buddies. We're married over 44 years now. We've been buddies for close to 50 and she's she's just wonderful. She, She said, okay, okay, here we go. And I heard her pray this prayer. Jesus, you want to take him home? He's never been mine. He's always been yours. You can do that. But I was glad she said that. <laughs> but I want him here. I I don't want to let him. I don't want to leave him go. So yeah. so Lord, I declare that your name's greater than the leukemia. Just just you know, just keep him here. You know. Well, wow. well that night in my room, uh, it was an isolated hospital. You know, a single room. Yeah. Uh, dim light under the bed. Night light under the bed. Uh, I started to get haunted by thoughts because the doctor's reports mm-hmm. were not similar to Sherry's faith. Right, right. They were saying, you know, here's right. how you're going to die. Here's what's going to happen. And and so in the middle of the night, a, uh, uh, a the door opened and uh, what looked to me like a, a, a nurse came in and she was African-American. Mm-hmm. She came over by my bed and... Uh, she, I looked up at her, and well, I'll never forget her eyes. They were just courageous mm. eyes that now in hindsight, they, they were eyes that said, if you could see what I see, you would not be afraid again. Mm. So she picked up my bald head mm-hmm. from the bed and cradled my head like a mom would cradle a child. Mm. And she prayed over me in a language I didn't understand mm-hmm. and laid my head back down and peace came over me. Wow. Well, the next day we got a card from a friend that said somebody in our church had a vision of an angel of the Lord was sent to you to minister strength to you and courage to you and peace to you. And this angel came and picked up your head and cradled it like a child and just ministered peace and courage to you. So we realized, I still get goosebumps. We realized to this day that was an angel that was sent by the Lord to minister to us. But there, I have this burst appendix, and you know they can't get at it. So an older woman from our church comes in the room, and she's a salty uh, woman, kind of a. I would put her. I, she'd be in one of those old pirate movies, serving steins of beer to pirates. I yeah. would could just <laughs> see her. She's just salty <laughs> like that. So she came in the room. She said, "Okay, came to see you," and she said, "I came to tell you this." The Lord is a shield around you, and you don't need to be afraid. Wow. And walked out the door. Wow. So okay, I'll, I'll take that. The yeah. Lord's a shield around yeah. me. He's a shield around me. Well, I lived six and a half weeks with a burst appendix, and the hospital had no idea why I was alive. And they kept telling me, you know, all that poison's at work inside of you. We can't, but we can't operate on you. Your platelet level's so low and everything. So it took six and a half weeks for my platelet level to come up that I, mm. I wouldn't bleed to death in an operation. And mm. all the counts came up. And I went in for exploratory surgery to see exactly what was going on. They prepared me for the worst. And I woke up from that operation and my surgeon came in, Corky, his name was. He came in and he said, Man, he said, I, I saw something I never saw before. I said, what's that? You know, he said, well, I looked at you and you have the insides of a 20-year-old. I said, thank you very much. I'm glad to know that. And then he said, then he said I expected to look inside of you and see you charred from the, the poison of the yeah. burst appendix. He said, no, nothing like that. Yeah. Because there was a pod that grew around your appendix and it was in place before it burst. Wow, And he said the pod was made of the toughest scar tissue the body can produce. And then I said, well, what did it look like? And he said, that's a crazy thing. It looked like someone took two shields and glued them together. And and I thought of, you know. You're giving me goosebumps. I thought of Franny's word to me. Sure. He's a shield around you. Don't worry yeah. about it. So wow. so he, he put a shield around me and all the poison, the burst appendix stayed inside that pod and he just extracted that. And within days I was out and never looked back. Wow, what a story. 
You've been healed now 25 cancer, years. Ago. Cancer free for 25 years. <laughs> Praise yeah. God. Well, you've got this all and much more in, in your book. Hope. Yeah, there there reason. are other details there. There are yeah, a lot of stuff. I probably ran some stuff together when I was trying to recall it. It's been <laughs> no. so long ago. But uh, I, I love your subtitle, "Embraced by God's Presence in the Toughest of Times." Yeah. Hope beyond reason. Forward by Randy Clark, Dave Hess. I highly recommend this book. You can get this book. Uh, just check the show notes. Get it on Amazon or wherever you buy books. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then you've got. I'm going to have you back because you've got a second book. Then read three books, but the second one, Hope Beyond Disappointment, where you help people come to an understanding of what God's doing when the prayers are not always answered not the always way answered. we're no. hoping. And no. I'm so glad you read the book. That's one of the most powerful things. Yeah, I, I would really like to encourage people that are even considering writing, write. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we we as a body of Christ have the best stories to tell. We do. We do. And and our our when you write a book, it gives people a place to process their own life yeah. and hear God. Yeah. And it's a gift to people. And it I is. never I almost didn't write. Yeah. I, I almost didn't. I thought I because yeah. I didn't do really well in school. I mean yeah. I my wife graduated summa cum laude. I graduated, <laughs> thank the Lord. I you know, I, it it was <laughs> the grace of God or teachers just want to get me out of there. But uh, I never thought of, yeah. of myself as being a writer. Yeah. You know, but I, but yeah, uh, I would encourage anyone. Fantastic. And then, of course, side by side, women in leadership, the role God has for them today. And we yeah. want to take time to talk about that, too, in the future on a future yeah. podcast. Okay. Uh, we're out of time. And I would gotcha. I would love if you would take a moment, pray for any leader, any person that's listening right now. Yeah. And they're struggling with some life-threatening situation. It could be cancer. It could be something else. Yeah. And pray for healing, yeah. grace, and hope. Yeah. I, I lift up my friends mm. who were maybe even hit out of the blue with a crisis in their life, mm. be it physical or emotional or relational, but you were there and you weren't surprised and you're with them. Yeah. Um, first of all, I pray that the revelation that you are not just present, but very present in a time of trouble mm. would come to them. And then let your healing love flow like a river. Yeah into their life, into their body, yeah. into their soul, into their family system, their relationships. Right. Bring restoration uh, in your amazing name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. David Hess, thank you for being on the Good podcast to be with you. today. We're going to have yeah. you back. Okay. Probably have you back a couple times. I mean, I like to take a lot of time on God's call on women in leadership also. But we're going to okay. have you back Let's next do time and talk okay. about what happens when we're disappointed and things don't turn out the way we think and yeah. uh, hope beyond the disappointment. Again, check out the show notes. Uh, for, again, much more from David Hess, Christ Community Church, his books, and any other potential articles, anything else that he has that would be a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us today for the Larry Crider Leadership Podcast and look forward to having you back next week again where we learn these biblical spiritual truths that will change our lives and because we're being changed, the lives of those around us will be changed as well. God bless you. Have an amazing week in the Lord. We'll see you back here soon. God bless. Thank you for listening to Larry Crider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com.